Birdhouse is a plugin that you can use in most DAWs or plugin hosts to have them receive OSC messages over the network and then trigger sounds or affect sound parameters using the MIDI that comes out of this plugin. Now, if you don't know what OSC is, it's a way for you to control audio software using small packets that are sent over the network. So you can use it over very long distances. You can use it wirelessly. You can use it with a LAN cable, whatever. It's very flexible and very cool. I use it quite a lot with microcontrollers like this one. This is a $2 ESP8266 microcontroller board that you can use to DIY your own electronics. And it has a little Wi-Fi thingy on here, which means that you can actually send OSC messages from this $2 piece of hardware over the network and then control your audio software. You can even use things like apps. You can use OSC to send data from one piece of software on your computer to another or from one computer to another, whatever. The only problem with OSC is that not that many DAWs or plugin hosts support it. When they do, they may do it in a sort of weird way. And then all sorts of wacky, weird things will happen. And I personally got quite tired of having an unpredictable way of receiving OSC messages in different DAWs. And some DAWs even have no way of receiving OSC messages. So I made this software, Birdhouse, to solve that problem. And also to make it a lot easier to work with. In this video, I want to show you how it works and how you might use it in a doll. Okay, so here we are in Bitwig Studio. Birdhouse is set up on this track called Synth, and I've put it as the first plugin on the track. Now, you could also put it inside of the note effects in Bitwig, and in other dolls, you may use it differently. I refer you to the manual of either the door or the manual of Birdhouse to find out how you can use it in your door. Birdhouse emits MIDI data, so this is the reason why I've put it as the first item here on the track. It's going to send out MIDI data to whatever follows it. Now in this case I've put a synth here called Polymer. Polymer is a really cool synth in Bitwig. Uh, we don't have to get into the nitty gritty of what it actually is. Uh, for this purpose it's just a synth. Um, Birdhouse is set up to send out note on off messages and MIDI CC messages. So we're going to use the note on messages to trigger notes and the CC messages to affect sound parameters. So in Bitwig, you can set up modulators and you can see here on the left, I've set up four modulators that listen to MIDI CC 48, 49, 50 and 51. Now these are mapped to different things inside of the synth. Now we can just press this and then we can actually map it to even more things. And that's how that works. So let's open up Birdhouse and I'll show you how Birdhouse actually works. Birdhouse consists of eight channels. Each channel has a path. It has an input minimum and an input maximum. So that is the way you define the range of the data that you're sending to this channel. And in the middle is a visualizer that you will see in action in a moment. After this is a MIDI channel. So this is the output MIDI channel. So it will convert whatever comes in at slash fade one slash fader one. And uh, as long as it's in the range of zero to one, it will convert it to a MIDI value that is sent to a MIDI channel. And in this case, I'm sending it to MIDI channel one and it's sent to MIDI number 48. So the MIDI number in the case of a CC becomes MIDI CC 48. In the case of a note, it becomes the MIDI note 48. CCs and notes work in different ways in Birdhouse. Notes will listen for the lowest value coming in. So here it's zero and it will use that low value to set a note off. So whatever is above zero is used as a note on and the value itself is used for velocity. And then if it's a zero or the lowest value you've defined here, it will become a note off. MIDI CC will simply send out a MIDI CC number that is a scaled version of whatever comes in and then scale it automatically to the MIDI CC range. At the end here is a mute button. This is very helpful if you want to map it using MIDI Learn in some synth uh, or if you just get sick of listening to one of these channels. At the bottom here is a global setting. It's port. You can set the port that uh, this instance of Birdhouse listens to. In this case, it's set to 6666. And next to it, you can see a green label that says connected. So when you change the port, it might sometimes say disconnected. Uh, and what that means is that Birdhouse was not able to open this particular port. But in this case, it was actually able to do that. 
And so this port is very important because when you send a value to Birdhouse, this is the target port that you're setting in whatever software or hardware you're using to send OSC messages to Birdhouse. So make sure that you use this port 6666 or whatever you put in here. It might be 8000. Now, as you can see, I've set up eight paths here. Four faders, fader one, fader two, fader three, fader four, and then four toggle buttons. Toggle one, toggle two, toggle three, toggle four. Now, as you can see at the end here, the first four are set up to be CC values and the last four become note values. Now I'm going to close down Birdhouse now and open up Pluck Data to show you how you might send OSC messages to Birdhouse. Now, as I said before in the beginning, you can use whatever to send OSC messages. It might be an app, it might be a DIY hardware using cheap microcontrollers, or it might be another software on your computer or another computer. In this case, I'm going to show you how it works with pure data, but as I said, it could be anything. Okay, so here we are with a simple pure data patch set up to send OSC messages to port 6666, as I said before. Now it's got four faders over here and over to the left, it's got a toggle button. This toggle button is hooked up to toggle one. And as we said before, it's going to trigger a note on and off pair. Um, the faders are all mapped to different parameters inside of the Polymer synth. And you will see that in a moment, how that works. Now in Birdhouse, we mapped the fader one, two, three, and four to send out MIDI CC messages on CC48, CC49, CC50, and CC51. Now these were mapped internally inside of this synth to do different things. So as you can see, if I wiggle one of these, you can see something happening inside of the synth. So that's pretty cool. And then if I press this button, it's going to activate one of the note on offs. And if I press this button, it's going to play a note on every 250 milliseconds. Okay, so let's open up Birdhouse and see how it actually looks inside of the plugin. Now you can see something's happening here in the middle in the visualizers. So each track has its own visualizer and you can see the values that are coming in and you can see how they are affected. So if I touch this fader, you can see immediately how the values change. Now this can be very useful for debugging purposes and also it just looks cool. And if I press the button, You'll see it activated down there. So that's the simple explanation of how Birdhouse works. Um, there's more to it, but uh, I would refer you to the manual that's available on the GitHub page for Birdhouse, where you can also find the source code and you can even change the source code if you don't like it. So have fun. <laughs>